God bless you, Thrive Church. Once again, it's so awesome to be with you. Thank you for joining us. We're going to worship the Lord, and I think about the song we're going to sing and how powerful it is, because it's just really a simple statement. You know, I love being a husband. I love being a father to our kids. I even love being a pastor. All the things that I get to do in life, whatever those titles are, it's wonderful. But the truth is, before I'm any of those things, I was made, and you were made we were made to worship the Lord. That's why we were created. It's our first purpose more than all those other things. Even though they're important, nothing is more important than giving God praise. Here we are in creation. It's so beautiful. And the Bible says that if we don't give him our worship and our praise, that the rocks and the trees will cry out in our place. So we don't want that to happen. We just want to worship the Lord and give him our praise and tell him that we love him. So that's our purpose. That's why we're here. Would you just join us tonight as we sing and we worship the Lord together. Come on, let's sing. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Oh. To worship you, I live. To worship God bless you, Thrive. Once again, it is Pastor Jake, Pastor Jill, 
and it's Thrive Church here on Wednesday night. And we're so grateful that you're joining us. It's so good to be together. I know we like to be together in person and on Sundays we're able to do that. But for now, for the time being, we're going to continue to try to get God's word to you, get you a little bit of hope and encouragement on Wednesday nights. Uh, there's so many different things we do online still with Pastor Bo sharing his devotions, Pastor Teresa sharing her adult Bible study class Thursdays at 10 a.m. And just uh, all of our services are still being uh, just broadcast live, even on Sundays at 10 a.m. So here we are on a Wednesday night wanting to uh, encourage you and bring you some hope. And we're just glad you're joining us tonight. It's always just good to be together. And I know sometimes, even if there's limitations, we should thank God for the ability to have technology to allow us to still get into God's Word. We know it's not quite the same, but God can use all of this for His glory in order for us to learn from His Word and just to be together. So even though it's not quite the same, uh, God is good. And I hope you guys just are feeling that. So thank you for taking the time. You don't have to do this. You don't have to take the time out of your schedule. But we were talking with, um, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to give a shout out to uh, to Mike and Alicia. They're just an awesome couple in our church. Uh, Mike was telling us how he watches this at work sometimes. And uh, and I, it just blessed my heart. He says, I sit in my truck and I'm able to get the word of God uh, just on my phone and I'm able to follow along and be blessed. So uh, I don't want to get in trouble by giving shout outs and leaving anybody out. But we love you, Mike. We had him over at our house this last Saturday and just spending time together and uh, fellowship, getting our kids together. Um, still practicing all the social distancing and the things we're supposed to, but still being together. So we love you guys and we love all of our Thrive Church family. So thank you so much for joining us. So I just want to share a story um, that happened back when I was in college, when I was just starting college. And uh, my parents were actually going through a divorce during that time. And so it was like my whole world had just flipped upside down. It was extremely hard. Um, and because things were so chaotic at that time, um, as I was moving up to Greeley to go to UNC, um, I had to do it alone. My brother uh, was busy, mom, dad, everyone's busy. So I loaded my car up with all my stuff and I just remember like go driving to Greeley, just crying, just so upset. How old were you? You were in high in college. Yeah, so I would have been nineteen. Yeah, yeah, an adult, but still adult. going through it. Yeah, um, because my foundation, everything was built on the Lord, but um, there was still a divorce, and man, that was super painful. And instead of truly like just going to God during that time, I really looked outwards and began partying and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, but I knew who God was. So I knew um, I could take it to him and pray, even though I was living crazy. So I, I remember just driving up to Greeley and crying and then just saying, God, please help me because I just felt so broken. And I remember I pulled up to my um, my dorm and it was one of the big tall ones. I was in, on the 13th floor and I remember pulling up to the loading area and like I was just broken and it was just the timing. It wasn't because, you know, like having to move in somewhere is a hard, that terrible thing, but it Normally, was the timing. Mom and dad would be there with you yeah. and supportive and they're going through their whole thing that you described. So you're all alone. Yeah. Yeah. Just felt alone and really felt the grief of once having that strong family unit. And then now it's just kind of everyone was just scattered. So I was carrying that weight and I remember pulling up to the dorm and um, getting out of my car and right there were two guys and a girl and they were smiling and they just said, we're here to help you move in. And I remember I just broke down in that moment, just started sobbing and it didn't, uh, it chokes me up still because it wasn't like it's that big of a deal. But at the time it was like God was still carrying me um, and that's what he does. He carries us when we, we feel like we need it or when even if we don't even know how much we need it, he carries us. So just be encouraged that God knows what you need and he's going to help you. I love that. And I know sometimes we feel when we share something that it seems like such a small thing, but it's not when I listen to you and I hear the, the, the brokenness in your voice. I don't know if you believe that church, but God knows when we need him most. She said something earlier as part of her story. She said, I know God and his word was my foundation. I, I know that I was raised that way. But during that time, 
not having your mom there or your dad there, knowing they're going through what they're going through, and you starting a new chapter in your life, even something as simple as moving into a dorm room and not having a family member, much less your parents, there by your side, and knowing that God placed some believers the moment Jill needed them most, right where she would see them, and they literally carried her belongings, and, and that's what God does for us, is He, he carries um, us in life when we need him most and it's it's if we're being honest we all feel that way from time to time here we are in the middle of this pandemic and we've talked to a lot of people who just feel overwhelmed um, and we're sharing something you're sharing something from years and years ago when you're in when college but even during this pandemic we felt the same way where we just feel overwhelmed and we know we need God in that moment and God in different ways shows his nature to us, who he truly is. And when we need him most, whether it's big ways or even small ways, um, God has a way of just letting us know that he's our foundation and he's there for us. And right now I wanna, I wanna play something for you. It's a short clip, it's about 20 seconds long, but I want you to watch this because I think that this is such a good picture of who we are as as Christians sometimes. And, and in life where we just feel like like we're just drowning and everything is falling apart around us and we're frantic and we're just uh we, we just feel completely hopeless i want you to watch this it's 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 a little funny but at the same time i believe it's it's really profound so watch this clip <laughs> How awesome is that clip? I mean, you're, we're watching that and you see this little kid frantically flailing and he's holding on to this rope and sure enough that that woman comes by and she, if you notice, she pushes his feet down to where he can realize that he's actually in shallow enough water he could stand right up and his reaction is priceless he kind of just looks around and just acts like nothing happened and that the reason i love that clip so much is because that's every single one of us i identify with that little boy because in life it's like you're clinging and you're holding on he's hanging on that rope he's kicking his feet he's just doing everything he's flailing and uh, not even knowing that, if he just puts his feet down, if he lets go of that rope and plants his feet down, he's perfectly safe. He's perfectly fine. That's a picture of God in our life. That, that must be what we look like in God's eyes when we're just so full of fear, convinced that we're about to go under. And really all we have to do is what God has told us to do. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I actually want to share this scripture and it's Psalm 28 verses one and two, and this is what God's word says. Lord, you are my rock. That's so powerful. I am calling to you for help. Don't close your ears to my prayers. If you don't answer me, I will be counted among the dead. It makes me feel like that little boy, the way he was acting, just for sure he was gonna drown. Verse two, here it is. I lift my hands. I lift my hands and pray towards your most holy place. Hear me when I call to you, show mercy to me. And uh, it's, I love that scripture. And I think of that video we just watched. And I think about us as Christians in life. How many times we have been at a place, myself, Jill, you who are watching, um, we've all been at that place where that's kind of how we feel. And I love the scripture says that God is our rock, which means he's that foundation. And I like verse two where it says, I lift my hands and pray to your most holy place. That's so powerful is God wants us to, to trust him. And, and that little boy, he was, he was hanging on for dear life to that rope that he was attached to. He wouldn't let it go until somebody came and pushed his feet down to show him that there's something even more firm, something even more secure. And uh, I really believe that that's us in life, that we have to let go of the things of this earth, let go of uh, our fears, let go of our worries. And look at this. I, I know you're at home and, and I know this is odd for you to do this, but if you can even lift up your hands and say, you know what, this is what I have to do in life. I've got to let go and I've got to lift up my hands. And the lifting up of my hands symbolizes prayer, worship, surrender, trusting God, knowing that there's a firm foundation, what the Bible describes as a rock underneath us. And that's what God wants us to do. It's, it's totally counterintuitive to what we would do in those situations, but it's, it's just letting go. Everyone say letting go. Letting 
In fact, I want you guys to write this truth down because I believe it's powerful. Write this down, church. The biggest part of trusting God is letting go. I'm going to say it again. The biggest part of trusting God is letting go. As long as that little guy was going to keep holding on to that rope and not feeling that ground beneath his feet, he's just going to keep feeling like I'm about to drown. Any moment, any second, I'm going under. But the fact that his feet were pushed down upon that surface, upon that, that firm foundation underneath them, and the moment he let go and he felt that foundation underneath his feet, it reminds us of the rock, Christ Jesus in our lives. And God says, if you would just lift your hands, if you would just raise your hands, just like the scripture says, if you would just worship me, if you would just trust me, if you would just praise me, we would all know and see that every time without fail, there's going to be a firm foundation beneath us and it's God. And that's what trust is. It's letting go. You can't hold on to the things of the world and kind of tap your foot around and see if God's there. You got to let go completely and say, God, I'm not in control. I'm just trusting there's a firm foundation. I'm going to lift my hands in praise, lift my hands in worship. I'm going to trust you and I'm going to let go of what I can't control anyway. And I know, I hope that video stays with you. I hope you think about it throughout the week, maybe during this time or the next several months where you're not sure how things are going to work out. You know, it's our job to trust God and to let go. So I hope that spoke to your heart. Hearing Jill's story about her time where she needed God and God was there. He's that firm foundation and God's uh he's always there for every single one of us and and I hope you remember that little boy and you see yourselves we see ourselves and that little guy um that's who we are in our faith sometimes but God is teaching us he's helping us during this time so here we are on this Wednesday night getting back into our sermon series standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of God. You know, I want to read our series scripture, the, the scripture that we've been reading every week. And I'm praying that it's getting into your heart, that you just are taking it to heart, maybe even memorizing it as a life scripture. But look at what Joshua 21 verse 45 says. It says, not one word of all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed. Here's the last part. All came to pass. And that's just something that we we get encouraged by us to know that not one word of God fails and every promise, if God makes it, it's gonna come to pass. So just get that word, hide it, tuck it away in your heart. And uh, I wanna talk about this week's um, message. This week's, if you're taking notes, this week's message is simply entitled, this week's promise is God is my provider. Come on, say it with me, God is my provider. And I know we believe that. Again, as Christians, I don't think we're probably teaching things that we've never heard before, but it's one thing to, to believe it kind of in your head and to know that this is what we preach in, in church and this is what we all amen when we hear those statements, but our life sometimes says something different. Sometimes by the virtue of our actions um, or our thoughts or how we handle stress or worry, anxiety or pressure. You know, I believe that God is my provider, but sometimes I don't always live in that reality. Sometimes I choose to worry. Sometimes I choose to stay up at night and have anxiety and just lose sleep or wonder in my own thinking, how are things going to work out? But we want you to write that down. God is my provider. We got three points like we do every week. And I want to give you the first point now. So please write this down, church family. My provider is my source. Again, for the sake of repetition, I'm going to say it again. My provider is my source. And when I say my provider, who are we talking about? Let's be clear. We know it's God himself. My provider is my source. So when I say that, it, it's a clear statement saying nothing and no one else is my source. In fact, that's what the word provider means. If God is our provider, then I'm not my source. This world is not my source. I praise God for the job I have. I praise God for for um, this nation, honestly, and for the country that we live in. I praise God for all of, all of these blessings, but I have to say it so clearly that God is my provider and my provider is my source. So that means I'm not my source. Um, this nation, my government is not my source, my job, all of these things. There's only one thing that's my source and that's my provider. So I wanna read a scripture to you. It's Philippians chapter four, 
verse 19. And this is a scripture that we share quite a bit, especially when we, we receive offering at church. But it's, it's about life in general. Listen to this scripture. Philippians 4.19 says, And it is he, talking about God, who will supply all your needs from his riches and glory because of what Christ Jesus has done for us. And I know that that's so clear in scripture. And sometimes scripture is very straightforward, very simple, very clear. It is he who will supply all your needs. It's, it's not anything else. It's not anyone else. But scripture tells us that it's only one person that supplies our needs. And not just some of our needs or most of our needs. But scripture is so clear. It will supply all of your needs. Who is that he in scripture? We know it's our God. It's our creator. It's the one who loves us. So um, I, I again, I know we, we as Christians, we say amen to this. But how do we live? How do we handle that? When you get to the middle of the month or to the end of the month and you just begin to worry and fret about how you're going to make it and how how well, what will we do? We have those conversations with our loved ones. We have those those arguments in our own mind. What can I do? What, and, and of course, we need to be good stewards. We need to do what God's called us to do, all of those things. But never, ever, ever forget that he alone is our source. So that's point number one. My provider is my source. I want to give you one more scripture because it's so short. It's so simple. But John 15 verse 5 says this, and it's Jesus's words. For without me, you can do nothing. For without me, you can do nothing. What is, what is Jesus saying to his disciples right there? He's making it so clear. You don't just kind of need me as a supplement to your life. I'm not just a helpful person. I'm not just something that if, if I, if, you know, if you need a little extra something in your life, you know, plug into me, get connected to me. But Jesus makes it so clear for without me, you can do nothing, not one thing. And I like how, how clear scripture is. I know when I have not made God my source and I've tried to do things on my own it just has not worked out and he wants us constantly to be reminded that he is our source that 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 my provider is my source so I want to share one more uh, truth with you and I love this one it's so simple it's a simple truth it's almost like a math equa equation but write this down church because it's powerful Jesus plus nothing equals everything come on write that down Jesus plus nothing equals what? Everything. As a matter of fact, when you add anything to that equation, Jesus plus myself, Jesus plus my ability, Jesus plus my thoughts, my planning, my gifting, my talents, it's Jesus plus nothing equals everything. But for us, we have to understand that that's the only way it works, that we can't, we can't jump in and say, I'm going to do this too. We have to realize that we completely are dependent on our God, that it's not us and God doing it together. It's a, in this example, it's he doesn't need us. He says, I am completely your provider. So point number one is my provider is my source. And here's Jill with point number two. Okay, point number two is this. My provider knows all my needs. Okay, I'll say that again. My provider knows all my needs. I go back to that story that I told in college. Um, it was not a surprise that I was going to be in that situation and need help or where my heart would be. I believe that the Lord knew and uh, he was just taking care of me. So my provider knows all of my needs. It makes me think of the scripture, Matthew 6, 8, and it says, Your father knows what you need before you ask him. I'll say that again. Matthew 6, 8, your father, which is God, knows what you need before you ask him. So I believe with that situation with back in college, before I knew to even ask, I, could, I couldn't even express what I needed. I just knew I needed help and my help was there. I believe God just provided it. Let's look at uh, Matthew 6, 31 through 32. And it says this, so don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? And what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. So church, that's just a reminder. He knows what we need even before we ask. So we don't need to fret about what's going to happen tomorrow or how we're going to eat. He's going to take care of us. One more truth for you, and it's this. 
Worry magnifies the need, but trust magnifies the Father. I'm going to say that again because this hits my heart. Like, because I can choose to worry a lot. Um, it's a choice. I remember when we first got married, um, I remember saying, I worry, but that's just who I am. And I really grew up believing that's just part of my personality is I worry. And you opened my eyes. God used you to open my eyes to say, it's not, it's not who you are. That's a choice. And it's actually sin. And once I realized that worry was like a sin and it's not part of my personality, I became responsible for keeping that in check. So I'm going to say this again. Worry magnifies the need, but trust magnifies the Father. That's powerful. Thank you, hon, for sharing that. So we like to just, as teachers of God's Word, we like to just be repetitive. So I want to repeat point number one. Point number one is my provider is my source. Come on, say it with me. My provider is my source. Point number two that Jill just shared, my provider knows all my needs. And I love that. I love that she just taught that my provider knows all my needs. Sometimes we feel like we got to tell God what our needs are. We don't realize that. He knows them before we pray it, before we ask for it. He just knows all of our needs. And that brings us to point number three, our final point. Simply write this down, church family. My provider, I love this, is my priority. My provider is my priority. And that is just, a, it, it, again, it should just be a given for us as Christians to believe if he's my source, if he knows all my needs, then he needs to be my priority. But how often in life do we drift away from our source? Do we drift away from the provider? God, time and time again, blesses us, takes care of us, shows up on our behalf. That's just who God is. And you read it in the Old Testament with the people of God, the New Testament, modern day times where no matter how many good things God has done for us, no matter how many times God has shown his power, his faithfulness on our behalf, sometimes we just have a tendency to drift away and we don't keep him the priority of our lives. And if you want God to be your provider, he, he just demands of us, I need to be your priority. Another way of saying that is I need to be first in your life. It's probably the hardest challenge as a Christian is to keep God first in your life. The Bible describes that as idolatry, anything that's put above or before God. When we just, yeah, and we're all capable of it. Sometimes it's so easy to point out somebody else's idolatry and, and you say, that is obviously before God in your life, but we have such huge blind spots in our life. We can't see it for ourselves, the things that we put before God. And we all just have different priorities in our life. And I'll tell you two ways you can identify what your priorities are, and it's these words, time and money. We're doing this series on Sundays talking about a heart for the house, and we're talking about you know our, 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 our time, our, our talents, our treasure. And it's just been a powerful series, but if you're not sure, if you're making Making God your priority, let me ask you this question. How have you been spending your time? 168 hours every week. Have you been in God's word? Have you been praying? Has your mind been on the Lord? We sure have time to be on our phone and that's me. We have time to watch endless hours of, of programming and TV or whatever it is we put before us. Um, we can just do all of these things. We can go out and organize our uh, craft rooms or our garages or whatever the things that we make priority, but it's our time. And the other thing is our money. Like wh what have we been uh, uh, spending money on? And if, if that is the things that are of this world, our hobbies, our habits, all of these things, those, can, those are bad uh, inherently by themselves. But if God takes a second to any of those things, that means he is not being our priority and other things quickly, so quickly become our priority. And I believe that's a strategy of the enemy to say that if you're not going to serve, if you're going to serve God, if you're going to have a relationship with God, then he wants to remove God from being number one in your life to anything but number one, number two, number three, right on down the line. He wants to keep God from being the priority of our lives. And we we sure do our part with that. So that we need to understand point number three, that my pri my provider is my priority. I want to read a scripture we all know so well. In fact, the whole chapter of Matthew chapter six talks about the practical things of life, about clothing ourselves and eating and taking care of ourselves and, and uh, working, all of those things. But it comes to, the, to this scripture that we all quote so much and we all know so well. Matthew six, verse 33 says this, it says, 
but seek first, and there's the priority, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And I know we know this, and that's my fear sometimes of sharing some some things that are straightforward and simple. Um, But the question I have, the follow-up question is, if you're not putting him first, not just him, but his righteousness, um, it's very easy for us to to not make him our priority, for other things to be our priority. Even though we say amen to this kind of teaching, we say amen to these kind of scriptures. We memorize these scriptures. We even believe these scriptures are true. But if we're not living it, you know, the Bible says in James, don't be deceivers and thinking that hearing the word is the same as doing the word. God wants us to be doers of the word. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not ashamed or embarrassed. I constantly fight to keep God the number one priority of my life. And I struggle on a daily basis. My time, my money, my thoughts, whatever it is, I can tell you I'm not successful at making God my priority. My provider is not always my priority. He's still good to me. He still blesses me. But he says, seek first me and my righteousness, my kingdom. Seek me first. Put me first. Get me from the back of the line. Get me from the middle line. Put me back at the front of the line. And everything you need, all the things you're worried about, all the things you're telling God, God, do you know about this? Do you know I'm going through this? All of those things, if you put him first, make your provi- your provider your priority, you're going to be taken care of according to God's word. And then the other scripture I want to share with you is Psalm 34, verse 10. Psalm 34, verse 10 says this. I love this. Even the strong and the wealthy grow weak and hungry but those who are passionate those who passionately pursue the lord will never lack any good thing how powerful is that scripture so you're like i wish i was strong i wish i was wealthy the bible says those the strong and the wealthy grow weak and hungry no matter how much strength you have or how much wealth you have those people will grow weak and hungry but those who passionately pursue the lord will never lack any good thing. That's another way of God's word saying that he has to be the priority of our life. And I just want to give you this final truth. It's powerful. Write this down. Spend every second of your life making him first in your life. Write that down, church. Spend every second of your life making him first in your life. He doesn't want to be second. He doesn't want to be an afterthought. He doesn't want us to run to him when we're in trouble and we haven't put him first. And that's one thing if you're not a believer and you're and you're not serving God and you're lost and you cry out to God and you say, God, I need you. He's going to run right there. That's, that's the heart of God. That's what scripture teaches us. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But if you're a believer and he drifts from that number one position of priority and he's not upon the throne of your heart, Um, We're all guilty of that. Every single one of us, pastors, ministers, seasoned believers who've served God for many, many years, it's easy to allow him to not be the priority and let other things become the focus. And I like that statement, spend every second of your life making him first in your life. It is a constant battle and you have to constantly keep checking in and saying, what happened? When did I stop seeking his kingdom and his righteousness? When did, when, where did I let it go? What took that place? And I want to tell you this. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's a forgiving God. He's a gracious God. As long as you're looking at that indicator, and that's the role of the Holy Spirit, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, when we have drifted and not let God be our priority, he, he speaks to us and he says, you've, you've lost your first love. You've let the priority of the provider go. And uh, if, if you're d- during this time, you're like, I really need God. I don't know how it's all going to work out. I don't know how we're going to take care of our family. We have to say he's our source. We have to say he knows all of our needs. And we have to say you're my priority. That's the teaching tonight. He wants to provide for us. His word tells us. But we need to passionately pursue him. And if we do that, we'll never lack a good thing according to his word. So we share all of this just to come to this, this, this point where I'm talking to two groups of people. I'm talking to the first group of people who are away from God, who are not serving God. People who need to call on the name of the Lord so that you can be saved. We believe every week in doing this, every time we have a service, whether we're talking to a camera or we're talking to a group of, of people in person, we're going to give the invitation for people to call on the name of the Lord in case you don't know if your life were to end right now, if you would spend eternity with with God in heaven, 
This is how you make sure that that's, that's secure in your life is by asking him, by confessing your sins and believing in your heart. He's faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's the word of God. So if you want to do that, we're going to pray that prayer. And then we're also going to pray for those who have maybe, you know, you believe God, you're serving God, but maybe he's not been your priority. Maybe you're worried and you're constantly listing all your needs, forgetting he knows all of our needs. Maybe you're looking at other things as your source and uh, not him. You know, any one of those areas that we preached on, we're going to pray for those those group of Christians that are that know him, you've prayed a prayer of faith, but you just need to be reminded through God's word that, uh, you know, in order for the provider to take care of me, I got to do those things. So we'll pray for you in a moment as we close. But right now, if you just want to ask the Lord to come into your heart and you want to just pray a prayer of, of salvation, this moment is for you. And all you have to do is just repeat after me this simple prayer. And the Bible says, if you believe this in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, that he's faithful and just. He will He will do what he said he'll do. You receive the gift of salvation. So I would like you to do that at this moment. If that's you, just repeat this prayer. If you want to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, just repeat after me and say, Heavenly Father. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I need you. I'm lost without you. I believe you died for me so that I can have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for taking my place on the cross. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to set me free. I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. All that I am and all that I have belongs to you. I will serve you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this is what I want to do. I'm gonna, we're going to pray for you. I'm going to have Jill pray for you about just not forgetting that God is our provider and that we're going to make him our, par, our priority. But I just want to give you a little instruction. If you prayed that prayer of salvation and you said, you know what, I, I wasn't connected with God. I wasn't sure um, where I would, if, if I were to take my last breath, if I would be with in eternity with Jesus. But now I know because I prayed that prayer. If that's you, we want you to message on this thread. We want you to private message us on Facebook, or we want you to even call the office. Um, and we want to get a booklet into your hand. It's called Now What? And it helps you as a new believer how to read God's word, how to become a disciple. So the office number is 303-428-9535. And again, we're just so grateful that you prayed that prayer. The Bible says that when you pray that prayer, that the moment you do that, the moment you call on Jesus, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and all of heaven rejoices over one person, one soul that prays that prayer. So we're so grateful for that. And I just want my wife to, to pray over you. Those of you who are serving God, but maybe we just, we miss it sometimes. Um, just, you don't have to repeat this prayer, but just agree as Jill leads us uh, during this time. Just let this uh, speak to your heart. And let's commit together that we're going to do better. And God wants to provide for us. We just have to do our part. Yeah, so let's pray. God, we come to you right now. And Lord, we just thank you that you are so gracious and that we can come to you over and over. And God, that you are so, you just are there with open arms ready to forgive God so please forgive us for getting our eyes off of you and focusing on a problem Lord God but we we turn our eyes to you and realize you're our source and Lord we just thank you for that we thank you God that you know everything that we need even before we ask and God I just pray that you will remind all of us to keep our eyes on you and not the problems Lord we love you and we worship you and we just pray that you will be with us and go with the church family God as we go into this week we thank you for that in Jesus name amen 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 so once again thank you so much for joining us and for just just pursuing God during this time. We're so grateful that we can be together. We want to invite you to church this Sunday or invite you to watch online from the safety of your home. But thank you so much for being part of Thrive Church. We love you. God bless. John chapter 12, starting in verse 23. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, 
while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Your tithe and offering represents seed. It needs to be planted in the soil. It needs to be planted in good soil. We have been doing grab-and-go lunches since the middle of March, and I'm so excited to let you know that State Farm across the street, they would look out their window every day, and they would see how we were serving the community, all because of your faithfulness. And they called up one day and said, we want to be a part of what is happening. We want to be a part of what you're doing. We too want to serve our community. So they planted some seed. They made a donation, planted some seed. And then they came for a couple days, uh, four days to be exact. And they helped give out the grab and go lunches. That's what your seed is doing. We have given out almost 25,000 lunches since we've started this all because of your faithfulness. Your seed is not just sitting, gathering dust. It is being planted in the hearts and lives. It is being a blessing to our community. We also have Thrive Academy that you can continue to give to. Thrive Academy is thriving. They may not be in session right now because of all the COVID virus that's going on, but they are still feeding the families. <clears throat> They're still feeding the kids. We have the food bank. The food bank is still going strong. We have um, literally hundreds of families um, throughout the month that is coming, wanting food. We have homeless that have been coming here, um, getting food, all because of your faithfulness. And I wanna encourage you, don't stop now. Keep your seed growing. The more you plant into God's kingdom, the more seed you're gonna get in return. How can you plant your seed? Well, there are several ways. You can text on your phone and all lowercase, we thrive, the word we thrive in lowercase to 77977. You can go online to our webpage, www.wethrive.org forward slash donate. Follow the prompts. You can bring your check up here to the church. We're back open. We'd love to see you say hello. You could mail your checks in here to the church. And if you have any questions about how to give, you can call the church 303-428-9535. We'd love to talk to you. Have a great day.